Hello everyone and welcome to the Fintech Times. My name is Tyler and today we're here at day two of Money Live in London. Uh, right now I'm joined by Ian. Ian, how are you? I'm very good, thank you. Good. Good to you? be here. Yes, it's a very early morning. Are you uh, <laughs> looking forward to the day ahead? Yeah, I think there's some great stuff on the, on the podium today, some really interesting uh, pieces that have been delivered and uh, we're expecting it to be a busy uh, and uh, fruitful day. Mm, well, it's, uh, it's an exciting time. Yeah. Uh, before we go on with our conversation, Ian, I'd just uh, like to introduce yourself yeah. and uh, tell us a bit about where you come from, please. No problem at all. Uh, well, good morning. My name is Ian Nelson. I'm the Managing Director for Q2 uh, in EMEA. Uh, we are a software and uh, services uh, provider of an end-to-end -end solution uh, in the uh, lending, uh, banking, alternative finance and asset finance space. Uh, we're centred, uh, centre our European operation from Cheapside in London. We have a team of 22 people uh, that cover a whole range of, uh, of roles that uh, provide full facility for our uh, 25 uh, European clients uh, and new prospects that we uh, hope to acquire uh, over the coming years. Well, that sounds very exciting, Ian. Thank you very much for sharing that. Um, I'm very interested to, to, be speaking somebody, to be speaking with somebody in the lending space because the pandemic has really shifted what we know about payments yep. and especially about the wider fintech scene. It hasn't given birth to these fintech developments, but it has definitely exacerbated them. Yep. Of course, in light of the pandemic, the financial strain of the pandemic, and then, of course, now we've got sky-high inflation, things like lending are at an all-time, their, their popularity is at an all-time high. Uh, and we're, we're, we're seeing a lot of people turning to things like uh, credit cards or buy now, pay later, for example. Um, and I think that's really, really interesting. But what are your thoughts on how the pandemic has accelerated lending? Yeah. Well, I think, I think you're right with a number of points that you raised there. Um, I, when I look at the pandemic, um, it, it, was, it didn't transform the technology of lending, but it definitely accelerated it. Um, you know, before, before the pandemic, uh, a lot of banks and organisations were looking at ways to engage with their clients on a digital, on a digital basis, um, but the pandemic really accelerated that. The, the ability not to go into a branch, not to leave your home, made a necessity to be able to, to access uh, lending and banking in a, in a digitalised and technological manner. So I think uh, that in, 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 in simple form, that's what it accelerated. It accelerated, in my opinion, uh, how close technology could deliver a client being in relation to their financial institution, lender or bank. It brought, the, it brought them a lot closer together on, on a technological basis so that they could do the banking from home, so that they could set up loans in, in minutes rather than hours. Um, and I think uh, in its simplest form, it just accelerated that, uh, that closeness of relationship between, between borrowers and lenders. Mm. I, I think you're definitely on the money in, in the fact that it's sort of like closed the gap of it and it had to really you know yeah. because nobody could be have face-to-face -face conversations um, we we touched up upon it just a bit before but I was wondering in terms of how people are borrowing and what models they're using to do that yep. what models are you excited to see right now well I think I think I think we've seen from the from the point of the pandemic we've seen a we've seen a step change in, in terms of that acceleration has really picked up. So at the point of the pandemic, I think it was just pure accessibility. You know, there, there was large parts of the, of the market that were just unaccessible on a technological basis. And, and we saw some, uh, some, some um, great work that we did in the market in terms of in making just pure accessibility to, 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 uh, to lending and to borrowing a lot more easier. Uh, so I think in, in the first instance that's what the pandemic did. But since that point, the new models that are coming to mar market, and we're seeing a lot of uh, excitement and interest in buy now, pay later. You mentioned it earlier, we have a solution that works in that space, uh, and we've seen um, and we've seen that 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 those sort of models. So I said in the first instance, I said it was about bringing the client closer to the lender. Buy now, pay later is a really good example of that because it brings you at the at the true point of sale, not at a till. But, but in a technological fashion, on, online, uh, do you want to take your payments over three months, six weeks or whatever, very, very quickly. And at the push of, the push of a button, an Amazon type experience, uh, it allows, uh, allows a borrower to borrow. So I think it's, it's, it's that acceleration away from just pure accessibility into being able to design 
how you want to yeah. borrow. And I think that's, that's where the changes have come and that's where people like ourselves and plenty of others who are here today have, have, have been able to uh, enable that. Um, I think for ourselves, the real interest in it has been that um, we cover quite a wide spectrum of the marketplace. So a lot of our competitors will work in the retail space, they'll work in consumer, they'll work in SMB, they'll work in corporate. Mm. Our solutions work across that spectrum mm. and it's a true end-to-end -end solution. So we're able for all of those clients to be able uh, right at the beginning through technology to be able to set up borrowing regardless of which uh, sectors that the, the, the lender is working or the borrower is coming from and that's why we found it such, a, such a, an exciting period of time in the technological uh, environment. Mm. Well uh, yeah it's, it's hit very close to home for me because my, my flatmate was actually buying a laptop last night with yeah. Buy Now Pay Later. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it is, it is a very real world thing that's happening, you know, right now. Um, and you, you mentioned that your, your solution is completely end-to-end -end and, and covers a lot of use cases. I think so far we've talked a lot about direct consumer spending. Yeah. But these models are also applicable to businesses and business yep. lending in particular. So I was just wondering in terms of business lending models, which ones have, are you most excited to see and how have they changed because of the pandemic? So, uh, when, I, when I think of the pandemic and I think of the business environment, I think about risk. So, uh, pre-pandemic there was very traditional models for risk. Company had to be traded in three years, it had to be profitable, uh, it needed to have certain dynamics that tick the box and relationship managers and otherwise would be able to use a metric that decided what the level of borrowing would be the right amount of borrowing. Uh, the pandemic has changed all those environments. You know, look at the hospitality sector. How many of the hospitality sector would now have three years of, uh, of, 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 of profits on their profit and loss? Uh, who may be less, less capital in the bank that they had. It's, um, it's, there's been a whole change in dynamics through the pandemic. And, um, and I think that's where technology is really able to help. We've been able to uh, work with banks and work with, with the models to understand, you know, what are the new metrics so are there new algorithms out there that can look at the true cash flow in a business? Um, can you, we've got a solution called Precision Lender that allows uh, relationship managers within banks to price for the bank's capital at the point of sale. Mm -hmm. So again, being able to bring a lot closer the decision making to the client and the client's requirements. And I think all of those pieces of technology bring new metrics, new algorithms, new dimensions to the model, in, uh, to the market in a, in a much more flexible and agile manner. Prior to the pandemic, I worked in a bank for 25 years and, and, I, and I understand that if you wanted to change the, the risk uh, appetite within a bank, it could take weeks, it could take years, it could take a long time to get that done. Whereas with technology now, you're able to impart that those changes very quickly. You're able to use new algorithms and different algorithms and, and impart them at the point of sale so that you're, uh, you're as a bank, you're having much more control over that at, at, at the time that you make the decisions. Uh, but from a consumer, from a, from a corporate perspective, uh, they, they, they see those changes very, very quickly and can, and can understand the different types of models, algorithms or otherwise that, uh, that are reflecting their current market space rather than a historic one. Mm. Well, it's, it's all the power of technology, really. It's, it's done so much to transform how, how people have access to funding and resources that they need in a, in a time when they really need it as well. Yeah. So it's, a, it's very interesting points that you've raised. But unfortunately, that is all we have time for today, Ian. No problem at all. I've, I've really enjoyed speaking with you, and you. I hope you enjoyed the rest of the event today. That's great. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.